Hello guys, good to see you again in our channel. Today we are going to talk about identity management done by Azure Cloud. As you know, it's in a cloud service. So it's very important that it manages its resources well. And only the subscriber who have access or authorization to access a particular resource has that access. So how Azure manages that? Right. So let's see, we are going to see this with the example of Azure Data Factory in the context of storage lake or the, the data lake. If you want to access a lake from Azure Data Factory, what are the different ways you can do it? You can do it through account key or service principle or managed identity. Okay. Now let's understand what these three are. When to use what? So when should we use account key? You have a data factory, you have a lake, you want to access it. Now, by default, they will not have access, direct access, because your lake is locked. Now, who should be getting access to? Now, the lake owner can decide whom to share the access of lake. For that, Azure has an access key. Each lake storage account created will have its own keys. These keys, if anybody has access to these keys, they can access your lake completely. Now, one way to do is a lake owner will share the keys with the data factory owner and say that, okay, now I trust you, you can use my keys. What, what are the drawbacks or what are the trade offs with this? When you share an access key, a user gets a super user access. He can do whatever he wants to do, right? He can update, he can delete, he can remove, he can do anything with the key. Now, this key needs to be kept securely because it's a super user access. You cannot misplace it. If it's gone to wrong hand, they will have the full access. Right? Now, if for some reason the lake owner decides that he wants to modify the key, he wants to change it because of some reason. Now this has to be communicated back to all the users who are using these keys and they need to modify it. Right? So these are the ways or uh, these are the pros and cons of using account keys. How account keys work. Now moving on to the second one. Service principle. This is a little bit tricky to understand so we will take our time. So what is service principle? Now, service principle is one way of Azure to manage identity. Now, who owns the service principle? The owner of the resource or the one who is trying to access it? In this case, it can be both ways, but most cases, uh, the subscriber will manage it. Now, as we said in the previous uh, example, that service uh, account key gives you the full access to the resource if you want to restrict that access you want to give access to a user to a particular files or the folders in this case this lake has suppose three containers out of the three containers i want to give access to the user only on raw or curated or enrich how do i do that now uh, the subscriber will bring in his own service principle now service principle is nothing but a combination of lock and key this is how you can understand it in an easy way. Now, a subscriber comes back and says that I have my own lock, I have my own keys. Now, I want to get access to your curated container. So, lake owner will do, what lake owner will do is he'll put that lock on the curated container. Right? Now, who has access to the secret or the key? Only the subscriber has the access. So whenever he wants to access, he will go to the lake with the key and he'll be able to access curated container. This is how a lake has been or the lake owner has been able to manage the access or restricted access here without sharing the account key. So now what are the pros and cons here? Access to only required files, yes, we have cheat. Key needs to be kept securely by the user. Again, in this case also, user has to manage the keys. We should make sure that these keys are not in the wrong hand. Otherwise, they will also get access to that container. 
Now same service principle can be used for multiple resources. Even though here we are showing this service principle being used in the lay, but the same service principle can be used in many other different resources as well. Still the key management is subscriber's responsibility in this case. So subscriber can actually create multiple secrets or even he can change the secrets. Now let's move on to managed identity. Now we have understood the first two options. Now what if as a subscriber I don't want to manage the keys. I feel like I may not be able to keep it securely. So Azure comes up with a third option. It says that if you want to give a particular role to a subscriber, you register your application with that resource and assign a role and Azure will take care of rest of the identity management. That's why it's called managed identity. Behind the scene, Azure is also creating a kind of service principle for you where the keys are managed by Azure. This is a role based, so we have to make sure when we are registering the resource, we will give only the required permission. And the advantage, as we said, a user, subscriber, or even the owner of the resource need not to manage the service principle or the keys. Now, just a simple uh, demo. Here we have a storage account and a data factory. So you have to go to your access control, the role assignments, and you just say add and role assignment. Here are three main components. One, this is a storage where we want to give access. This is a data factory which needs an access. And this is a role which we are granting. So once you allow this, this data factory will be able to access the storage account with the role of reader. So it is as simple as that. No need to use any keys, any service principle, nothing. So as we apply this identity management in storage account, the same thing you can do with Azure Databricks resource as well. You have to go to Azure Databricks resource, click on access control, go to role assignment, again select a role, select your data factory and then you're done. Now we'll go to Azure Data Factory and see how our link service looks like. Now you'll notice here in the Azure Data Bricks link service, you don't have the option of service principle. So only two ways you can connect that's access token or manage service identity. Now access token is slightly different here in Data Bricks. When you go to Data Bricks, you will have an option to create an access token. It is not created by default, but user will have to create it and they can create as many access token as they want. That's about Azure Data Bricks connection to Azure Data Factory. Thank you. Thanks for watching.